Okay, today we're reviewing uh, how acids and bases react. But before we do that, we're going to learn a trick to memorize the strong acids and the strong bases. Uh, just recall that acids react with bases, strong acids react with strong bases to form water and a salt. I should have written that in there. I should have put in strong. Strong acids and strong bases react with, uh, with each other to form water and a salt. So I gave an example here, hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. What do you get? Sodium chloride, you see the sodium from the sodium hydroxide and the chloride from the hydrochloric acid combined to form the salt. And AQ means it's dissolved in water. And then you also get water as a byproduct. Also remember that these symbols mean the four different uh, states, three different states of matter and something dissolved in water. So S is for solid, L is for liquid, G is for gas, AQ means dissolved in water. The strong acids, meaning the acids that dissociate completely in water, meaning if you put them in water, they break apart completely into the um, protons and the chloride anions in the case of hydrochloric acid, or into a proton and the nitric acid, uh, the nitrate anion in the case of nitric acid. The strong acids are remembered by making a word out of, the, out of their negative ion, out of their anion. So it goes no, so, cla, cla, col, bri. No, so, cla, cla, col, bri. And then you just put an H in front of each one of them. Sulfuric gets two H's because it's a, a diprotic acid. So the strong acids are nitric, sulfuric, chlorous, perchloric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydriotic acid. And these are all the strong acids that we know. If an acid is not a strong acid, then it's a weak acid. Pretty simple to remember. For the strong bases, uh, they are group 1 cations, sodium, potassium, rubidium. And you put one OH, one hydroxyl group, uh, one hydroxide group in, uh, next to it. And castor bile, which is a group 2. So here's group 1 and group 2 hydroxides. The way you can remember them all together is nacre casserbach. These are all the strong bases, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Now for some practice on naming the types of reactions and balancing them. The first example I have, uh, I'm going to erase these and show you how I thought it through. The first example I have is an example of a combustion reaction. You see I have methane reacting with oxygen, producing carbon dioxide and water. And when you get only carbon dioxide and water as your products, it's a pretty good bet that you have a complete combustion reaction. If you have an incomplete combustion, you get other things like carbon monoxide and just soot, which is symbolized by just a C, solid C. In this case, we have complete combustion. And the way you balance combustion reactions is very simple. You do it alphabetically. First carbon, then hydrogen, then oxygen. So we look at the carbon on the left side. These are the reactants. So we're going to balance the reactants with the products. You can't have any different amount of num numbers of atoms. The number of atoms on either side of the equation have to be equal. You can't have atoms disappearing or appearing out of nowhere. There's one carbon atom on the left, so there has to be one carbon atom on the right. So. Uh, one and one here is appropriate. There's four hydrogen atoms on the left, so you have to have four hydrogen atoms on the right, and the way you can accomplish that is by putting a two in front of the water, because the only place where you find hydrogen on the product side is where the water is. Once you've done carbon and hydrogen, the last thing to worry about is oxygen. Again, remember, it's done alphabetically. There's two oxygen atoms over here, there's two oxygen atoms over there, that's four oxygen atoms on the right, so you're going to put a two in front of the oxygen on the left. And now it all balances. And one, way, one of the ways you can check is to go systematically from left to right. One carbon, one carbon. Four hydrogens, four hydrogens. Four oxygens, and two plus two is four oxygens. The next equation is a synthesis reaction. You have two things being converted into one thing. They're combined to form one thing. So this, that's called a synthesis reaction. It's the reaction of magnesium with oxygen. That would typically be a combustion reaction. So you could also say it's a form of combustion. The burning of magnesium results in magnesium oxide. And we balanced it by putting uh, a two in front of the 
magnesium oxide in a two in front of the magnesium because uh, oxygen is diatomic. You could also do this. If you didn't want to write two twos, you could simply write a one half in front of the oxygen. And then one magnesium atom combined with one oxygen atom to give you magnesium oxide. That's also a perfectly valid way of balancing the equation. You are allowed to use fractions. Some people don't like it, but it's okay. Uh, magnesium burns so ferociously that you can also get it to combine with nitrogen. So in the absence of oxygen, if a fire is hot enough, if it's well underway, the magnesium will continue burning, even in the absence of oxygen, by combining with nitrogen. And you get magnesium nitride as a product. And we see here it's also a synthesis reaction. And uh, to balance it, uh, because magnesium is a plus two cation and nitride is a minus three, uh, you can use the crossover method to tell you what the coefficients are for each one of the elements. So it's magnesium nitride, Mg, 3, and 2. And now let's balance it. You'll have three magnesiums, three magnesiums, uh, two nitrogens, two nitrogens. It balances, and this would be a solid once everything cools down. In the next uh, equation, it's a single displacement reaction. It's the reaction of aluminum with hydrochloric acid. The, the products are aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. To balance this one, uh, well, I'll show you what I did as a rationale. I'll raise the coefficients and you can see what I did. I looked at the aluminum chloride. I said, well, I see three aluminums over here, and I only have one aluminum, uh, one, sorry, I have three chlorines over here and one chlorine over there. I would have started by putting a three over there, but then I noticed that there's two hydrogens. And the only way I'm going to balance those, three, uh, those two hydrogens with these three hydrogens is if I just double everything, turn this into six, and then it makes it easy to balance the three hydrogens uh, if I turn it with the six hydrogens here and six hydrogens there, and then I'll just have to put a two over here to account for the fact that the chlorine's been doubled. And let's see, and two aluminums over there. So let's check now. Two aluminums, two aluminums, six hydrogens, six hydrogens, six chlorines, six chlorines, it balances. And it's a single displacement reaction. We have aluminum displacing the hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid to form aluminum chloride. In the next equation, we have a popular equation that's used to demonstrate chemical reactions because it produces a brightly colored yellow precipitate, uh, lead uh, plumbus iodide, it's called, or lead 2 iodide, you could say. It starts off with lead nitrate, plumbus nitrate also known as lead 2 nitrate, and you mix it with potassium iodide, which is a clear solution. It looks like water when you mix it. But when you mix, as soon as you mix these two together, you get a very bright yellow precipitate forming. Uh, this stuff stays in solution. Potassium nitrate is uh, soluble. How do we balance it? The first thing I looked at is I saw the 2 next to iodide, so I know there has to be 2 iodines. So I put a 2 in front of potassium iodide. Then, by putting the two in front of potassium iodide, it forces me to have two potassium atoms, so I'm going to put a two in front of potassium nitrate. Uh, then I see that I have two nitrates, and that balances nicely with the two nitrates over here, so I don't have to worry about that. Now let's check our equation. One lead atom, one lead atom. Two nitrates, two nitrates. Two potassiums, two potassiums. Two iodides, two iodides. Balances perfectly. This is a double displacement reaction. Okay, the lead is trading places with the uh, iodine, and the potassium is combined with the nitrate, although the nitrate, potassium nitrate remains soluble. It's more attractive to the water than it is to its counter ion. And that's why this one is solid and this one is aqueous. When you see solid in the products, you know that a reaction has taken place because a solid is forming. We see if both of them stay AQ, it means there's no reaction. But in this case, you do have a reaction. The next reaction shows sulfuric acid combined with potassium hydroxide. So sulfuric acid is a strong acid, potassium hydroxide is a strong base. The product is a salt and water. It's a double displacement reaction, but it's also categorized as an acid base reaction. Um, to balance it, remember that, there, that sulfuric acid is diprotic, it has two hydrogen ions, it's going to combine with two hydroxide ions, so that's why I put a two in front of the potassium hydroxide, let's see if it balances. We have two hydrogens combined with two hydroxides to form two waters, and perhaps I can show that over here, H plus 
plus OH minus gives you H2O. That's the basic reaction between acids and bases. So if you have two of each of these, then you get two waters as well. And uh, then we have a, one sulfate, one sulfate, two potassiums, two potassiums, and we've discussed everything else. So it balances, and that is an acid-base reaction balance.